Today we're going to look at a de-energized tap changer, also referred to as an offload tap changer. And I'm going to explain to you what it is and how it functions. Now offload tap changes are installed on electrical transformers. And let's have a look at some of the components quickly. We can see here we've got a dial gauge with some numbers on. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7. And then at the back here we've got a rack and pinion type of arrangement. That's these funny shaped teeth. And above those we've got some pins that stick out. These are actually used for electrical connections. And underneath here you can see we've got a metal plate which will be making and breaking circuits as it travels along this grey metal plate. In other words, as it is pushed along by the rack and pinion. So let's have a look now at how the whole thing works. So we'll change positions. Let me just go over here. Okay, so you can see it is moving along this rack as the handle is turned. Now the handle is usually manually activated and sometimes you'll see that the tap changer is padlocked to stop people moving it when they, they shouldn't be, especially if it's energized. That's exactly when you do not want to move it. And we can see that the movement indicated on dial gauge is actually proportional to the amount the rack is pushed along the metal plate. We'll see it again. Two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Okay, another thing to notice here is that as it's moving along, the metal plate, which is this one here that connects these, these pins that press onto it. See one pin is pressing onto it and another one at the back. And that metal plate is pushing onto those two pins. As it moves along, it is now no longer pushing on those two pins. It is pushing on this pin here that you can see at the front and also the pin which you can see slightly towards the back on the right hand side. What's happening is that the tap changer as it moves, it is breaking and making circuits or breaking and making a circuit. And I should actually mention here that when we talk about breaking and making a circuit, this is a de-energized tap changer. So when you're moving it, the circuit is not actually live. But as we move along, we can see we're changing the wiring connections slightly. Instead of being sort of on this one on the top left and to the other one on the left now, it is, as the plate has moved, going to the pin on the left and the pin on the right. And if the plate moves again, it is now connecting the pin on the right with the pin further away, that one there. Now each of these pins are connected to windings on a transformer. And as it's sliding along the pins, we can see it's also doing it here on this connection and also here on this connection, a three-phase transformer. Each of these pins are associated with a single phase on an electrical transformer. And as it's moving, it's actually changing the turns ratio on the windings of the transformer. What I actually mean here is each of the windings is made up of a certain length of conductor or a certain amount of turns on the winding. And as we rotate the tap changer, we are varying or changing the length of the conductor or the number of turns on the winding. Now this is quite important because if we can vary the number of turns on the windings, we can also vary the output voltage. Now I've got to specify here that the windings that we are varying are the secondary windings. We're varying the output voltage. So this is not for the primary winding side, this is actually for the secondary winding side. And by varying the number of turns in the winding, we can vary the voltage output. Now if you know anything about mutual inductance, you'll actually know that if a conductor is placed within a magnetic field or a change in magnetic field, we will induce a voltage in that conductor. And that's essentially what we're doing. We're changing the amount or the length of conductor within the magnetic field by changing the number of turns within the magnetic field. So if we can add more turns, then there's gonna be more turns within that change in magnetic field, which means we're gonna induce more voltage. If we 
decrease the number of turns within the change in magnetic field, then we will decrease the voltage. And that's essentially what the tap changer is doing. Now, we're doing this all manually per hand. On larger transformers, you won't be doing this manually per hand. You will have a automatic tap changer, and this is known as an onload tap changer, which we're gonna do another video about in the future.